Thanks to everybody coming out. Coach Henry, you just got to tell me. All we got to do is beat Carney for this kind of crap. That's it. Make it work. <laughs> Thanks for everybody coming out. It's great to see everybody. And uh, awesome. Great, great kickoff to our basketball season on Sunday with two wins with both our women's and, and men's basketball team. I'll talk a little bit about our game last week with Missouri s and and then obviously our upcoming game for the Home State Trophy against Black Hills this Saturday. You know, played a Missouri s and team that was 10-1. Uh, and I think they finished ranked 19th in the final Division II playoffs and, and came out and played a pretty good first quarter, first quarter and a half. And then after that, we had uh, some of the same miscues that have played us in, in critical situations. We had three turnovers in the second half, gave them a short field, uh, something we couldn't do. I had the win in our back in the first quarter, which was obviously an aid to that with a short field. And the win in our face in the second quarter, we weren't really able to get back on track. Third quarter, we came out with a win in our face. I thought our offense did a tremendous job. We pushed it to 10 points and then uh, continued to give up some big plays and snowballs from there. So uh, certainly a learning experience for our guys. Uh, second week in a row that we've got to play better in all three phases and we can't allow the allow the fans to get snowballed. And really, if you look at the Carney game and then last week's game against Missouri s and we fought our way back into it early in the third quarter. we got to find a way to continue to eliminate the turnovers. Uh, move the football offensively and stop the big plays on defense. And, and that will be the challenge this weekend as we play, play back in state. Watching tape on, on Black Hills, you know, they, they won two games in a row uh, against uh, Western New Mexico down on the road. They beat Fort Lewis in pretty similar conditions to what we were playing in last Saturday. So sometimes those games are really hard to evaluate, especially when they're on the grass field. But a lot of, senior, a lot of seniors on defense, I think they start nine seniors on the defensive side. Uh, that's certainly a strength for them. They played very well in special teams last week against Fort Lewis, had a couple block kicks. And they'll throw the ball around quite a bit offensively. They get a nice little running back, but their quarterback's gotten better throughout the week. Uh, so we're excited to, uh, for the opportunity to end the season on a positive note. We're educating our young men every day on what this rivalry is all about. I think it's a very unique experience to play in the third longest rivalry in college football. That is unbelievable. When you talk about how long college football has been around the United States, and the opportunity for us to be part of the third longest rivalry. So we will have a, a former alumni football player speak to our guys each day before practice this, this week. Uh, we had our seniors talk about the, the meaning of this game, and certainly uh, we, we've hyped this thing up and we're excited to play that game on Saturday. So any questions that I can answer for you about the Missouri s and game or the f game this weekend? Four, four consecutive days against teams have been fully funded. What's the difference? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, you, when, when, you know, we all know, uh, you know, there's a couple of things. When you play four teams that are fully funded, there's a depth issue, there's a talent issue. Uh, when you're starting a handful of true freshmen like we are, there's a learning curve and there's a physical side. So I think those things were certainly a challenge. We knew that going into the season. Uh, I think if you look at the last two games, the physicality of the games, you know, how physical those games have, as Hayden was told, We've been beaten up a little bit. Uh, but all that being said, we've had our opportunities in each of those games to compete, to move the football. I think we've learned a ton of lessons with, with a young group, and we need to continue to, uh, to grow and develop as a team and recruit these players that when we line up against a fully funded team that we can compete for four quarters. Other question. What happens after this season? Where we recruit, we recruit, recruit, and then we're going to recruit a little bit more. Um, and, you know, that's the start of through December and January. And the other huge part of that is developing the young men we have in this program. We have a talented group of freshmen. You know, it's our job to, number one, make sure they're getting done what they need to get done academically. And, number two, we've got to get better in the weight room on you know, the strength side of things. And that's to be expected with 18-year-old with mud. But those two things is to develop the players we have in the program, get them physically and mentally ready to uh, compete at the Division II level, and continue to bring in Division II talent here and compete at the D2 level. What about uh, mid mid semester midterm uh, people? Yeah, we've we've targeted a handful of you know, mid year transfer football players that really hit some neat spots. We'll be bringing guys in throughout. Uh, even we have somebody coming in this weekend, but we'll be bringing them in throughout uh, throughout the mid year time throughout December, and hopefully we'll add you know a handful of them here as we go into our spring semester. Other questions for Coach Collins? Absolutely. I thought our defense, when you watch that tape, played the tails off that first half. I mean, they were they're flying around, we're fitting the run well, we really established some things early. The tough part is, is we kept them on the field too much. And then you, you have, if you look at the 21 points, it's on three short fields. 
And then the flip side of it, when, you, when we're not moving the football offensively, it's three and out. Our defense played 90 downs, and that's the second week in a row they played 90 downs. You add that to the 20 downs of special teams these guys are playing, that's 110 downs against two fully funded teams. And we're not at a place in our program where we can play that many downs defensively without the depth. And, and so when you see when, when things start snowballing in the fourth quarter, a lot of that has to do with there's something to build too much. And we need to get that fixed in a couple different ways. And it starts by being able to move the football, control the clock, and not turn it over. Other questions for Coach Collins? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, no questions, no turnovers. We got to move the football with efficiency. You know, what, what we did, even when we played Missouri Southern, very strong in my double A team, we've got to be able to move the ball with efficiency, put points on the board, and not allow big plays on defense, and change the game on special teams. Tilt the game out there with special teams. Other questions? Now that you've got almost a year behind you, how does it measure up to what your first expectations were? You know, we were maybe a little less talented than I thought, just being real honest with it. You know, when we were competing at the Division II level, I think myself as a coach, being at the D2 level for 10 years, and really being a, a national title contender in Central Washington for a three-year span, I had a tendency to look at things through those eyes, you know, as you're watching a team, as you're scheming for a team. And so you come to the realization, this is who we are, this is where we're at as a program. Um, but that, all that being said, I also think it defines what we need. You know, I think there's a clear definition of what we need to move on to be competitive at the D2 level. And we're going to get that done, hopefully sooner than later is what I'm fighting for. What are the two or three things you're looking for most to build into recruiting the program next year? Yeah, we, two things are size and speed. And that's a pretty general statement, but we've got to be able to be stronger interior with our defensive front. And that starts with defensive tackles and our, and, and our linebackers. We've got to be able to stop the run on a consistent basis. And then we've got to create speed. And if you look at our, you know, our outside skill positions, we've got some very good young guys on the defensive backside that, that can run uh, offensively. We've got to be able to stretch the field some more. Uh, replacing Ja Rover uh, will be, be – we've got some talented backs in the program. But he's a difference maker, so finding some type of difference maker on the offensive side where we can kind of make that our bell cow and go to work with him. Well, we lose seven seniors, you know, and it's been a tough year for our seniors. We're going to talk to one here in a minute, but they've been banged up quite a bit. But, you know, anytime you lose a senior class, Brian Freed's a phenomenal left tackle. Uh, you know, I nominated him for the All American team, and I don't do that lightly. I mean, he can play at any Division II football program. He's a warrior, and he's a very good, good football player. Uh, we lose two seniors. We lose all our, our, our captains. You know, Jonathan Tristeo, who, who's going to speak here in a minute, but uh, he was injured all year. Bernice Berger has went down with an injury. Uh, Colton Jeldon will be gone. You know, we lose Andrew Weiss, who's been a role player for us in a couple different areas. So, yeah, anytime you lose seniors and anytime somebody's been through the program for a four or five year period, they're going to be a key contributor. All right, I'd like to bring up Jonathan Tristeo. Uh, again, another quality young man. Jonathan's just a a very strong leader in our football program. He's a civil engineer major, already graduated. He's from the California area, and I'll, I'll let you touch base with John. Like Coach said, my name is Jonathan Costello. I grew up in a small town of Delmar, California, in the San Jose Valley. Um, it's a very small town. Uh, and how I got here, I, uh, my junior year in high school, uh, I sustained an injury to my thigh bone and shoulder blade. Tore up my shoulder pretty well. And uh, at 16, when you're playing small town high school football, that's kind of the only thing you focus on. So the injury helped bring me back down to earth, and I realized I kind of needed to get more coaching. I was going to play football for myself. And uh, so that's how I ended up at school points. Jonathan, tell us a little bit about what you did last year. Um, you're not the normal person just come to school, play ball, so on and so forth. What else did you do? As far as where did you work? Uh, are you referring to the trip I took this summer? No, I'm referring to where did you work last year? In the warehouse? <laughs> <laughs> I expected that to come from Tom. But <laughs> I, I think my point is it, it's not everybody doesn't get full scholarships. You have to work, you have to make ends right. meet. Yeah, and that's that's another challenge that, um, like Coach mentioned, coming to work on the program. 
a lot of our guys have to work uh, in the off season, some of them during the, during the season, and uh, that puts an extra strain on, on us as athletes. You know, we want to be focused on our studies. Um, we have to be focused on football if we want to be successful, and a lot of guys got to work on Saturday. So that definitely would have added strain to the athletes in our program. Other questions for Jonathan? How'd you like your first winter here? Uh, I didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't snow where I'm from, and so the first, the first snowstorm was cool for about the first 20 minutes. And I lost two minutes. So I lost all the snow. Yes, I'm graduating in December. I got so it's in the works. Nothing, nothing was final yet, but hopefully. It'll be when you get out of the workforce, what would you tell somebody that you run into that you think is a quality athlete to come to Tech? How would you recruit them? I sell the big picture uh, as well, and even to some of our younger guys. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, when you're a uh, freshman coming in. Four years sounds like a really long time, and then you have athletics on top of that. But when you get done here, you can't, you know, life's unpredictable. And so you never know what's going to happen. And uh, I myself have been through some injuries, like Coach Vincent was getting banged up quite a bit. And you never know when one of those injuries will be significant enough where you can't play anymore. And so no matter what happens when you come out of the school, you'll have a degree that can set you up for the rest of your life. And so that's what I try to tell you. What's team morale like for the last game of the year? You know, I think Coach kind of touched on it. A lot of the guys aren't really. Um, too sure they can sense that this is a bigger game, but a lot of them are not familiar with the rivalry. But everybody is looking forward to, to putting a win up for the So, you know, this team is really resilient. We've got a lot of young guys and they're small and experience and things like that. But one thing that you can say about them is, is they keep coming back every week. And it takes something special to come back every week no matter what the outcome is. And so that's, that's something. Thank you, Jonathan.